zucchinis. That delightful summer squash that some people consider an intermediate plant is actually pretty easy to grow. And if treated right, will be some of the most prolific plants you've ever seen. They do take up a fair amount of space and resources to achieve this massive bounty, causing the average grower to only plant one or two. But without multiple zucchini plants to fall back on in case something goes wrong, you'll have all your eggs in one basket. So today, let's look at all the things that we need to know to grow epic zucchinis this year, and all the things that we need to avoid so that we don't end up with none. Zucchinis, courgettes, and summer squash. They're all the same thing. First grown in Milan, Italy a few hundred years back, zucchinis are the direct descendants of domesticated squash first found in Central South America over 7,000 years ago. You wouldn't know it, but botanically, zucchinis are actually a berry. It really is a fun, amazing plant with an interesting backstory. So, Let's look at all the things that we need to know to be successful zucchini growers. Zucchinis can most certainly be direct seeded, provided you have a long enough summer. If you're going that route, plant your seeds one inch deep into moist, rich soil when the temperatures have hit 65 degrees Fahrenheit. This will ensure that you're clear of any possible spring frost and your zucchini plants are good to go. They germinate fast, within a week to 10 days and you'll be off to the races once the true leaves appear, another one to two weeks later. If growing more than one, space your plants at least two feet apart, and if you're growing many, keep your rows three to four feet apart. Many people who direct seed will plant two seeds per spot, thinning to the best plant shortly after germination. This is sort of an insurance policy, guaranteeing you a healthy plant in the early stages. Remember, Usually we're not growing very many zucchini plants, so we need all the insurance we can get for these guys. That's great, and it's nice to have the choice, but to save time as well as bed space, I always grow my zucchinis from starter plants. You can buy them every spring for pretty cheap, but if you're like me, you'll wanna make your own. If you missed the first zucchini video, here's a quick tutorial on how to do just that. Roughly a month before your last spring frost, Plant your zucchini seeds in a potting mix designed for seed starting. I tend to plant my zucchinis roughly a month after my tomatoes and peppers, simply because they grow faster and they get planted in the garden later in the season. I usually plant my zucchini seeds in the 70 cell nursery trays, but you can use anything from small pots to even biodegradable paper cups. Keep the soil moist and between 75 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit and you'll see germination within a week. Once they sprout, try to keep the temperatures below 70 degrees Fahrenheit to keep them from getting too large and lush and give them as much light as humanly possible. If you're anything like me and you always make the mistake of starting your zucchini seeds too early, you may need to move them onto larger pots with some fresh soil. And for those instances where they're really stuck inside for too long, you might even have to give them a little bit of liquid food to keep them healthy. So remember, if your tomatoes and peppers end up being started and germinated indoors about three months before planting, aim for your zucchini seeds to be started around two months prior. The timing of the seed starting for zucchinis really is an art form, and you'll get it, you'll get it after a few seasons, but either way, as a fast growing plant, there's thankfully a pretty big margin of error. So don't get discouraged or even turned off of starting your own. With our zucchini plants growing inside for a couple of months, they're most likely bursting at the seams ready to be planted. In late spring, when the nighttime temperatures have consistently stayed above 60 degrees Fahrenheit, you can go ahead and plant them. Prior to that though, I do like to harden off my zucchini plants for at least a week you know, to minimize the transplant shock and the possible leaf damage. Couple hours at a time in a nice shady spot, gradually moving the plants to be more and more exposed to the elements. To plant, you really wanna bury the zucchinis right up to the first whirl of leaves. 
Squashes are really notorious for getting tall root collars. Now, the root collar is the part of the plant where the stem meets the soil. It's fine on a small plant, but as these guys grow, and especially as they begin to bear fruit, the whole plant can flop over, which is something we obviously don't want. So get those zooks nice and deep. When I plant mine, I don't just use the soil from the garden bed. Obviously with a container or pot, I'll use a brand new potting mix, but even in a raised bed, I'll supplement the planting with some fresh soil. Give those new roots of these still fairly young plants something to dive into and really get established. For spacing, you really need to go bigger than you think. Truly. These are big bad boy plants that need room to grow. Two feet apart minimum, three feet apart between rows if you're crazy enough to grow that many. You can intersperse other crops such as lettuce or spinach, or even onions. Get creative with it. Zucchinis are actually amazing companion plants. Okay, let's get some mulch on these guys and water them super good to complete the planting. When watering your zucchinis, not just for the first time, really water long and thorough at the base of the plant. You want to encourage your zucchinis to develop really deep root growth. It's in their best interest. Zucchinis are impressive plants, and while they grow massive and produce substantial bounties, it comes at a price. Both the space and water requirements are obvious, but like my tomatoes, zucchinis are one of the rare plants in my garden that actually needs supplemental fertilizing. I always heavily fortify my raised beds with my own compost. Heck, I even do it with my pots sometimes too. And for virtually all the plants in my garden, that's enough, except for zucchinis. If you're like me and you feel that your zucchinis need an added boost, you wanna go with a balanced organic solution. What I mean by balanced is equal numbers of the NPK. Those are the numbers that you see on the packaging of any commercial store-bought fertilizer. And what that is, is that product's ratio between its nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, which are the three main macronutrients that all plants need for sustained growth. Try to keep them as close to equal as possible if you're gonna go that route. Gardeners that are growing container zucchini are gonna need to supplement at some point. There's really no way around it. And honestly, even if you're growing them in raised beds, you're probably gonna need to feed them something as well. Of course, that depends on the quality of your soil and the quality of your compost if you're adding some, but these are big, vigorous plants, and it comes at a cost. Zucchinis produce both male and female flowers on the same plant. Early on, you can get a bunch of flowers and no fruit, and this can be really confusing for new growers. But what it is, is those are the male flowers. They tend to come earlier. The female flowers follow, and they're the ones that bear the fruit. So you just need a little bit of patience early on. The fruit is coming. And speaking of the fruit, zucchinis are always picked immature. You want to harvest them early, about six to eight inches long maximum. If you're growing them for bread or to feed to livestock, you can let them grow much bigger, but they won't be good for you to eat. Plus, the more you pick these guys and the faster you do it, the more they produce for you. Once the mother plants get going, they can produce for you non-stop for months. And you'll quickly start to see why one or two plants is more than enough for most families. There's a few things that are going to put a damper on our zucchini master plans. Let's tackle them in chronological order as that makes the most sense. Like we said before, zucchinis contain both male and female flowers. By definition, this makes them imperfect, as they don't have stamens and pistils on the same flowering structure. So for a zucchini plant to fertilize its female flowers, insects such as bees must be present. If you're not seeing fruit, or very little of it, you could have a pollination issue. Another telltale sign of pollination issues is getting a little bit of fruit and then having them wither and fall off. So if you're not seeing fruit, or very little fruit, or fruit that just falls off, you could be having a pollination issue. Having more zucchini plants in the surrounding area is obviously gonna help, but some people actually resort to hand pollinating. It's not that hard, and the toolless method works the best. 
Simply peel off a male flower, exposing the pollen-loaded anthers. Rub the anther all over the stigma of a female flower, and voila, pollination issues solved. Another issue with the fruit that pretty much every grower will eventually see is blossom end rot. Physiologically, this is a lack of calcium in the cells of the plant. Since the cells of a zucchini plant that are literally the furthest away from its transport system are those at the end of the fruit, they receive the least amount of calcium. Plants use calcium to build their cell walls, and so the deficiency is first noticed by a darkening off followed by rotting of the fruit end. On the surface, you'd think, okay, I need to supplement the soil with some calcium. And while that may be true, soils are rarely deficient in it. More likely the culprit is inadequate or intermittent watering. Water transports the calcium and it uses the plant's xylem or transport tissue to do it. Not enough water, and like we mentioned before, being literally the furthest away from that water slash nutrient source means the end of the fruit will show the suffering first. Another thing that can cause blossom end rot in zucchinis is too much nitrogen. Remember before that we said zucchinis require a balanced nutrient mix? Well, there's a reason for it. In the case of nitrogen, too much of it will produce massive expensive foliage which will hog the resources such as calcium and water. And further to that, nitrogen fertilizers can actually add salts to your soil and that further inhibits the uptake of calcium. Trust me, I've seen it so many times. Massive, massive plants with little to no fruit to show for it. Hold off on the excessive nitrogen and keep the watering steady and thorough. The other major issue that tends to rear its head later on, and you'll come across it because every gardener does, and that's powdery mildew. Powdery mildew is a fungal disease outbreak that begins as white mold spots on the leaves. It quickly spreads if left untreated and it'll take down entire plants pretty fast. For many of us, it happens at the end of the season and it doesn't really do us any harm, but in some cases it can appear early and if it does, it will definitely affect your plants and your harvest. Crowded conditions, lack of airflow, water on the leaves are all a perfect storm for an outbreak. Make sure to water your plants at the base, not all over the leaves. And of course, space your zooks properly right from the beginning. Even still, you may need to prune certain plants where the foliage becomes too constricting. Just remove the older leaves diligently and keep an eye out for overgrown specimens. Zucchinis are an amazing plant. And once you grow it properly, you'll be hard pressed to find a more bountiful crop. I kind of do see how some growers consider them to be an intermediate plant, you know, due to the unforgiving nature of the watering, the nutrient balance issues, and of course the threat of late season powdery mildew. But don't let any of that scare you. I've seen first time growers do amazing with their zucchini, and I know you can too. And hey, if you have any other zucchini growing tips that you'd love to share, make sure to leave a comment down below.